wash my fears away. For you are great I am. Rest assured I feel your hand holding me.
Testing, can you hear me? Am I on, Keith? Good morning. How are y'all doing today? How are y'all doing today? Good morning, good morning. So we're going to start today. Today is 4th of July weekend. I know a lot of people are out partying today. I know a bunch of people are camping. Hopefully you're watching on live video up there. If you're not, that's okay. I'll find out anyways. No, I'm kidding. All right, so we're having a great time today. We're going to be celebrating God today, celebrating our freedoms today. So we're going to start off today uh, with a short uh, tribute uh, uh, with some messages from our past presidents about uh, God and country. So let's just begin with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for bringing us here to church today. Lord, it's going to bless this service, bless every aspect of it. Let's just have a wonderful time, Lord, as we just celebrate you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us, young and old, join together, as did the First Continental Congress, in the first step in humble, heartfelt prayer. Let us do so for the love of God and His great goodness, in search of His guidance and the grace of repentance. Almighty Father, if it is Your holy will that we shall obtain a place and name among the nations of the earth, grant that we may be enabled to show our gratitude for Your goodness by our endeavors to fear and obey you. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties, and fashion into one united people the multitude brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow with your spirit of wisdom those whom in your name we entrust the authority of government that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law, we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as you give us to see the right, let us finish the work we are in to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow, and for his orphans. Continue to guide and sustain us in the great unfinished tasks of achieving peace, justice, and understanding among all men and nations, and of ending misery and suffering wherever they exist. For we are given power not to advance our own purposes, or to make a great show in the world, nor a name. There is but one just use of power, and it is to serve people. Help us to remember it, Lord. God be with us as you were with our fathers. May you not leave us or forsake us, so that we may incline our hearts to you, to walk in all your ways, that all peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no other. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the founding of our country. Uh-oh, where did I put the clicker? Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. If you're new here today, that's normal. I lose things all the time. Even when I just had it two seconds ago. That's uh, so Praise the Lord. All right, here we go. Well, today we're going to be talking about... I want to take, take a few minutes to just talk about our country and then pray about our country. Um, you heard those words. Our country was founded by God. You know, it was founded by men who feared the Lord, who wanted God to be at the center of our, our country. Today, this is our American flag, and it's, uh, it's uh, when I got it, it's called the grunge American flag. You see, it's a little bit dirty and things on it. And over the years, things have happened in our country. You know, we are... I, in case you don't know this, America is not a perfect place. There is no perfect place except one place. That's going to be heaven one day. There's always going to be things. There's things that are going to happen. And uh, what happens is, is our job as Christians, remember we, are, we have dual citizenship from a few weeks ago, that sermon. We are dual citizens. We are citizens of heaven. And we're also citizens of what? Of the earth. We're citizens of the United States of America. And it's our job 
to honor God with all that we do. And no matter what happens in our country, you know, we, we cannot be, you know, what someone else did. It, 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 you're, you're not responsible for the sins of someone else. We're responsible for our, our own sins, what we do. And our job as Christians is to do this. Our job as Christians is to do the best to make America look like that. Yes, there will be soils. Will we do things wrong? Yes, we will do things wrong. But we need to do our best to show people that this is still a nation where we have the freedom to talk about God. There are many countries in the world that don't have that freedom to do that anymore. And there's a, probably a movement in our country to take our freedoms away as, as it is. But you know what? That's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that as we come to it one step at a time because we serve who? The King of Kings. He is our ultimate ruler. He is who we go to. We know at the end he's going to set all things straight. And at the end, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It only matters what what? What God says. And so we need to pray for our country. We have a lot of leaders in our country that have very differing views. Now, I will say one thing. There has been, right now, the word everyone likes to put out there now is our country is more divided than ever. That's a lie. Our country has always been divided. You look at every political election in the history, every presidential election, and your president usually gets elected somewhere between 44 and 51% of the vote. That means usually at least half the country or more than half the country doesn't like who's in office. We always have been divided, but in the past we've been able to get through our differences and work together as one nation under God. I remember the biggest time I saw it was, um, <clears throat> remember 9-11. <clears throat> the country was united like it had never been before. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we had what? A common goal to go towards. <clears throat> it was also a time of great revival in our country. Right now there's a lot of things going on. And I'm not here to say <clears throat> that we're here to right every social evil or everything that's gone wrong. Here's the deal. Our job is to do exactly what God says. <clears throat> and if we do what God says, here's the thing. We should treat everybody exactly like God treats us, right? We love Everybody, we care about everybody, want to connect with everybody, want to celebrate with everybody, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter what's happened in their life. You know, the way to solve division is real simple. Treat everybody exactly the same. <clears throat> Will people have different opinions? That's the great thing about the United States of America. You can have a different opinion, and you're allowed to have that. There are countries in the world where you cannot have a different opinion. You could get killed, thrown in prison, things like that. That has not come to here in the United States yet. Yeah, I know a lot of people are trying to push that and do things like that. But you know what? That is not the case right now. Thank God for that. <clears throat> we are a shining light still to the world, and we need to continue to be that no matter what happens. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> I double your salary today. How much do I pay you? Nothing. Two times nothing is? Nothing. All right. There you go. <clears throat> what did you say, Linda? Quarter. I don't know how you get that math, but okay. <clears throat> but we need to pray for our leaders. Does God say you have to like your leaders? Not to take, we don't have to agree with everything, but God says we have to love everybody, including our leaders, right? <clears throat> no matter what happens, we are to love one another. We're supposed to lift them up in prayer. Just because we disagree with things, it's okay. Because here's the deal. Will you, truth is this way. Whatever you think is true might is what's true for you. Whatever someone else thinks is true is true for them. The problem is many times truth is, is totally in between the two. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ is what? Truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no matter how you put it, no matter how you slice it, one day we're going to get to heaven and we're going to find out that we were wrong about a great many things. <clears throat> so we need to go to him and pray about him. Today as you came in today and... Uh, Pat, I want to preface this part. Well, what's, I want to pray for our country first, and I want to talk to you real quick. We need to pray for our country because, yes, the, the, the divisions are flaring up and all kinds of different things like that, but it can be beaten by one thing and one thing alone, the love of Jesus Christ. Because if we have Jesus in heart and everybody gets saved, we can still, you know, you could be saved and still argue with one another. It's okay to do that. But here's at the end of the day, you're still brothers and sisters in Christ and say, okay, I just don't agree with you, you have to say, so we can move on with that. It's, unity does not mean you all agree with everything. That's communism. That's not unity. Okay? That's socialism. We believe in freedom. God believes in freedom. It says, and the truth shall set you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. That's our theme verse this week for Vacation Bible School. And we're going to run that home this week. 
It's freedom means you have the freedom to have your own thought, your own ideas. And you know what? If someone has a different thought idea, that's okay. That is okay. But we need to pray for our leaders. You know, it's okay if we don't now. It's okay not to like what some of our leaders say. I mean, and many of them, I'm going to tell you some things I don't like. Okay? It's okay to say that. It's okay. But you know what? If we get too much arguing back and forth, you know what happened? It turns into mudsling, and then you know what? If they don't believe in Jesus, they're never going to listen to you. So what's, we need to pray for our country. We're, we're, we're at a very critical time in our country. So let's pray today, this 4th of July weekend. Dear Lord, right now we pray for the United States of America. I thank you, Jesus. You have all given us the privilege to be in this country. Despite all the struggles that are in this country, still, it's still the most free place in the world. We can still talk about ideas. We can still work the jobs we want to work. We can go do the things that we want to do. And we thank you for that. And we can worship God without fear of someone walking in here and taking us all off to prison. We thank you for that very much. I want to thank you, Lord, that you've given our, our previous leaders the wisdom to put different bills of rights in, in, in our Constitution and things like that. I know things are under attack today, Lord, but Lord, we want to protect those. We want you to protect our country, protect our freedom to proclaim Jesus Christ to as many people as you can. And bless our leaders. Bless our president. Bless our House and our Senate. Bless the Supreme Court of the United States. Bless our governor and our House and representatives here in Pennsylvania, our local leaders, Lord. Lord, uh, you, you, you've created all of us, Lord, to be loved. And you want all of us to go to heaven. There's no one you hate. Lord, we might disagree with people at the time. That's fine. We want to be able to disagree, but still show the love of Jesus in an amazing way. And we thank you for that today, Lord, to bless our country. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, this weekend, Friday, I, had a, I got a, as you know, Wednesday, masks became mandatory in all public places in the United States. Oh, not in the United States, in Pennsylvania. Different co- co- states have different rules. And uh, this morning as you walked around, you saw me, I have my mask on. It says, you are awesome. And I had, now the first time this, this rule came out, there were eight businesses that were exempt. Churches were one of them. On Friday, I got, an, I got an addendum to the order on Wednesday. It was a question and answer session by the governor with some leaders around the state. And he addressed two things. He addressed uh, churches in particular, and he addressed uh, children activities uh, two and older. And, uh, and this time around, we're not exempt. And I want to start up by saying, before, no matter what you think about this, if you're watching online, I know some people are upset with some of the decisions I've made. That's okay. I want you to know, first thing you've got to understand is this, this is, I have to do what I think is best. I go to God, I have counselors. Just so you know, I have tons of people always in my ears about different things. You have no clue. You have an opinion, you have an opinion, you have an opinion, and a lot of you like to share with me, that's great. And then I get opinions. This week I was working at the festival park, and a whole bunch of non-Christians gave me their opinions about things. And I have to, as the pastor, decide on a, on a road. And I have a board, and we had an emergency board meeting Friday night. And it was, for the beginning part of it, it, it could have gone either way on different things. But here, here's the bottom line. At some point, I, I serve God, and the board's job is to advise. And then at some point, I have to be, yeah, I'm the chief servant, but I'm also, by virtue of my office, pastor, and I'm the shepherd, and I have to lead. So I have to make some decisions. And uh, I just need how Greg is here. He's one of my mentors, so I didn't have to call him. I always call him. I have a big decision. I get to talk to him. His sermon today, he decided to preach before he came here is so timely for what's going on. I think you're really going to enjoy it today. Uh, it, it's, it's it, Huh? Well, maybe not. Okay. But uh, so on this mask thing, there's a lot of things. Should, should we or should we not wear them? The church, as uh, he's asked churches to do so. Right now, just so you know, we're going to do our regular service, our regular things. Uh, the stage is only, the camera is only on the stage. So no, it's not paying the audience today. So I don't want anybody to get in trouble or anything like that. It's totally up. I'm not going to tell any grown adult what they can or cannot do. But as a servant of the church and, and the governor has specifically asked certain things, I had to make a decision about this. And I will tell you my opinion. I'm allowed to have an opinion. Okay. And my opinion is, I don't think these do a bit of good. I, I, no, no, don't say amen. This is not a sermon. This is my opinion. It is not from God. 
So this is not an amen moment. I, I, I think there's, now there's people on the other side that say they do a whole lot of good. It's just my opinion. I am not a medical doctor. If you take my opinion and go out there and say, I said, I said Pastor Evan thinks it doesn't do, any, doesn't do a whole lot of good. I am not a medical doctor. Okay, so you, you cannot take my word and go out there and say, oh, I'm not worrying because Pastor Evan said so. Because I didn't tell you you couldn't wear it. I'm just telling you what my opinion is about the mask. Could it do good? I, I, I don't know. I am not a medical doctor. There's, there's doctors on both sides. I read reports from Duke, Stanford, Harvard. I, go down the list. And that none of them agree. Not one. I've not read, I would like to find one that agreed with one another. I, I, they all have very differences. And they all have major differences here and there. Even the ones that agreed together about wearing or not wearing, they still have major differences in it. I, I, it's the, what I have learned about this whole situation is this. We simply just don't know. Okay? So the governor has asked to do that. So that's what I've, my opinion about this. However, you will see me on stage. It says I'm, anybody on stage is allowed not to wear one. That's why I don't have one on right now, according to the order. When I'm off stage, I'll be wearing this. because here's one. We have four things we got asked to do this year. You'll see them later in the video. One of the four things that God asked us to do was, what would Jesus do? And, that, and Greg brought, the, brought that up to me. He asked me, what would Jesus wear a mask? And that kind of, I had to think about that. We could fight over a mask, but if I have to fight over a mask to, get, to tell someone about Jesus, I'm not telling them about Jesus, I'm fighting over a political issue. You can think whatever you want, but I think that if Jesus lived today, He'd wear a mask. Because the gospel, getting the gospel message out is more important than arguing over a mask or not to wear a mask. So even though I don't believe in this, I believe in Psalms 91. I don't have, somebody asked about fear this morning. I, I don't fear the disease. I believe Psalm 91. If you're a Christian, it will not affect you if you're truly a Christian. Not if you say you're a Christian, if you truly are. Because remember Greg preached on the you said's last week. You know, God said it, and I believe it. I'm one of the high risk people. I have diabetes. I don't afraid to shake anybody's hand. I'm not afraid to tell someone about Jesus. I'm not afraid to go to the hospital. Why? Because God said, if you follow me, the pestilence will not affect you. I stand on that. God's either true or he's not true. But you can't stand, well, here's the thing, you can't stand on a verse, but not be holy in with God. See, if you stand and say, I believe in this verse, but I'm not so good about being with God, then it, it won't work for you because God said you've got to be all in or all, or all out. It's one of the two. So I'm going to wear it. I'm not gonna, it's up to you. They're going to be at the doors. You don't, don't feel pressured if you will have to or don't have to. Uh, because of the mandate, I have to make them available and let you know about them. And this week for Vacation Bible School, I've had a lot of things. I had to make big decisions on that. You know what? I, and uh, he mandates that those two and older should wear a mask at all times. And there are almost no exceptions to the rule. Now, we can't ask anybody anything like that. But, but you know what? We're going to have a lot of people come in to VBS who don't go to our church. And I don't want to be at the door fighting over someone about masks. I just want to say, hey, we're doing this because we're following the, I'm going to say we're following the governor's order. We want to tell you about Jesus. And we're not going to make anybody look any different. We're all going to look exactly the same because, we, because you know, he, he, you don't follow the governor's order when it, when it violates the Bible or scripture or, or mor morality. As much as I wish I could find a verse about a mask. I didn't look because I've read the, I read the Bible three or four times through, throughout the year. I've, read it, I, I've never in the 20 years I've been a pastor have come across a word about wearing a mask uh, in, in the Bible and uh, where it's a bad thing. So I didn't waste my time doing that. So since, since the governor, is, he has specifically, this the last order, he did not specific, he told churches you were exempt. And we, we, we run by that. This time around, he was very specific on what churches should or should not do. And what private and what public settings with kids should be like. And VBS is a public setting. It was just our church kids. We might be a little different. But we're inviting the community out. We pass out over 300 flyers at the, at the festival in the park. No idea what's going to come. So since it doesn't violate God. Now, this is totally what I prayed to God about. I'm not saying this is God's word. This is, I want you to know my reasoning behind it. That uh, we're going to follow, we're going to, the governor's asked us to do it. I can't find a sp scriptural or moral objection to it. So I personally, I can't make any of you do it. But I, I, I can't, but for the public event, I'm going to follow to the letter of the law. They can't take it off for playing sports and eating and then coming back in, in here. We're going to do that because I, 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 he, he asked specifically churches on Friday. Well, he sent us, sent us a letter uh, or email. 
And I, I can't, it, it, the Bible says we're supposed to obey those in authority over us. You know what, I, I'd like one day to meet him and tell him about Jesus, maybe he gets saved. I don't care what you think about Governor Wolf, he still needs to hear about who? Jesus. I don't know where he stands. I know you might, take a, you might know where he stands based on some of his decisions, but you know what? You know, if I met him one day, I'd like to be able to be able to say hi and say, you know what? I don't like what you talk. You say, you talk, but here's the way I would go. You can tell me what you want as long as I can tell you what I want to tell you. And I want to have that freedom to do that. So that that is why the decision has has been made, and uh, it's it's not to infringe on your freedoms. It's not to do that. That is just my conscious decision uh, going forward with that. Uh, I know I've already talked to many on Facebook and many on the phones. Some are against, some are for, and that's fine. It's okay to agree to disagree in the United States of America. I just want to let you know I have 8 million voices in my head. You, 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 you've talked to me, and if you think you're the only voice talking to me, you're fooling yourself. Okay? When something goes on, everybody wants to tell me what's going on. And, they think, and some people think they're the only person talking to me. That ain't the case. And I go talk to God, and this is what, I've, this is what I believe God wants us to do, and I've gotten counsel on that. So, uh, so that's, that's what we're going to do. And we believe God, hey, we, we might have 100 kids of VBS, we might have 20. But you know what? If just one gets saved, it's worth the battle. You know what? And when the, I was at the radio station a few weeks ago, and, and we, drop a, we had a radio program every Sunday morning. And they said that a lot of the town's looking to see what I do because I was the first church to open and do different things like that. That also stuck in my head. You know what? I, I, I'd much rather share about Jesus be, from behind the mask than have somebody walk away from me being mad because I'm not wearing a mask and then I don't get a chance to tell them about Jesus. So that's just, that, that's, that's it. That, you don't have to do it. You don't even have to believe it. I just want you to know, rather than hearing from 8 million people and those watching online, I want you to hear my reasoning from me. Because, you know, I want to do everything we can to win people for Jesus Christ. So, hope you, hope you don't, if you hate me, that's fine. <laughs> I hope not. I'm just trying to do what I think is best to share the gospel. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and have worship time. They're going to come up and have worship. And just to know, if you're new here today, we have uh, green cards in our pews. We'd love you to fill one of those out later on and, and give it in. We also have prayer and praise report forms in the pews. We're so glad you're here with us today. And right now, let's just praise the Lord this morning. I don't know if I stole someone's mic, did I? Wow. Even though we are mandated to wear masks, we can still praise the Lord. Amen. So let's just turn up our praise this morning and just sing with all of our hearts as we worship him.
together the glory of God. Mighty name. 
feeling right now. We're kind of feeling to sing that chorus out again. So we're going to start. Let's go back. I will dance around your throne. We're going to sing that part out twice. Because you know what? We are free in Christ. We're free to dance. And give praise and glory to God. Let our lives be Let our lives be those that point to the glory of God in every moment. Let's give God glory. I will dance around your throne in your presence. God is good, amen? amen? You may be seated. Lord, you want to do some good news reports? Can you walk around and do some good news reports, or you want me to do it? You can do it. All right. Praise God. Before I do it, I want to give a little testimony, and I want to give you this little golden nugget. How many know what a golden nugget is? It's just a little wee thing. That doesn't mean huh? I'll take it. Oh, you'll take it. Yes, I will too. Oh, you, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> you find these golden nuggets. Forty-some odd years ago, I was learning to play golf. And the man told me this. He said, yeah, I was learning. No, I'm still learning. I haven't learned yet. I don't know what I play, but it's not golf. Anyway, <laughs> I, he said to me, in golf, it is not the bad shot that gets you. It's the next one. Now wait a minute. Don't, don't get too silly on me. In our lives, it's not the bad decision that gets us. It's the next one. Ooh, you got it? Because you can, you can make a decision after a bad decision that is a good decision It'll put you right back on track. Don't allow the devil to keep you going down the road on the wrong decision. Who will be first with a word of testimony? God is so good. Over here, I'm going this direction. Right over here. Oh no, you're not turning. It's not your turn yet. <laughs> oh no. When somebody stands up in a Pentecostal church with paper... Watch out. It's a long one. It's a very long one. <laughs> I would like to praise all of you for praying for me. Um, you know that I had melanoma. I ha had melanoma. And um, 
for you have prayed for me. I thank you very, very much because it made a difference. It made a difference to me and also to Jesus. I want you all to know that. But when I had melanoma, um, I didn't really know that I had it. I had a big black spot on the back of my arm right here. And they operated on me, but they kept digging and digging down further and further three times. And they told me that it was a four. I had melanoma and it was a four. And I thought, I'm going to die of melanoma. That's what's going to happen to me. But as, th- as time went on, they wanted me to go through the treatment. And it was going to be, you know, having the injections. They wanted to put a port in here and all that. And I said, no, the Lord has this. And in the office, I raised my hands. I said, praise you, Jesus. And the doctor, was, he's from out of town, way out in the other countries. You know, he doesn't know anything about Jesus. And I said, Lord, you have this. And the doctor just looked at me like, what what are you saying, you know? But I knew what I was saying. I knew it was Jesus. And I thought, no, I'm not going to go through the treatment. He said, you have to go through the treatment. You're going to have this forever. And I said, no, I'm not going to have this forever. It's going to leave. It's gone. And he said, no, it can't be. I said, it's gone. And I thought, well, you'll see. So I, I, two years I've been going through this now. So they kept going back and going back, and it was, I was going back every month I was going back. But I was sometimes going twice a month. But it takes two years for the, the medications to have it all intravenously done. But I didn't have it done, but they kept checking on me and checking on me. The doctor quit seeing me. He sent his nurse in. I, he didn't want to waste his time on me. So when I went in for my last checkup, and I had everything done, the brain scans and the intravenous and the, from the top to the bottom and all that. And my um, uh, primary care doctor told me first, and she couldn't wait to tell me, because I, doc- I had a doctor's appointment with a, my cancer doctor next. But my uh, doctor told me first, and she just had a big smile on her face. And she said, Maggie, you don't have cancer anywhere. You do not have melanoma anywhere. But I said, she said, you don't have it in your brain, you don't have it in your lungs, you don't have it in your kidneys, you don't have melanoma anywhere. She said, did you go through the treatment? I said, no, I didn't have any treatment. And I thought, this is really good stuff. Yeah. And I thought, this, <laughs> this is really great. I said, I can't wait to tell my church people. So here I am telling all of you that I, and the thing was, when I had cancer and it was a four, I thought, Jesus, you got to do something because I can't, you know. But he did it, and I praise the Lord for it, and I praise all of you for praying for me. And I thought, this is really good stuff. <laughs> Thank you all. As you all know, I'm a klutz. <laughs> I got hurt. <laughs> Um, they gave me the results of my ankle injury and I can only say that it is the grace of God that I was able to be on that stage being the angel because I have four torn tendons and there's no way I should have been out of pain, but I had no pain on that stage because of him. And to this day, I still barely have any pain in my ankle and I'm able to walk. You know, God is good. What you got to understand about Maggie's story is this takes two years, and two years to the day it was there, and she had a choice to take it or not take it, and at Maggie's age, it's kind of, we talked about it, and does she want to be sick and try to get better, or just, and so it, it, don't go against doctor's advice just because, you know, we, we got to pray about things and do that. Maggie made a decision based on her age, not, I'm not, Maggie's only 18, okay, no, right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you know, don't, don't, I, I want to be careful about it, we, God does a lot of things, you know, what she, she, she had, they gave her a choice of what to do, and they still had her come back every month, I said, hey, go to all the appointments and see what happens, and if something changes, we talked, and hey, you know, if you feel like then you want to go for it, because she's reached an age in life, if she doesn't want to be all through those treatments, then she has the right to make that choice. And amazing, when she came to me this week at the park, it's like, I was reminded, two years to the day, they said it would take two years for the medication to go through. Two years to the day, the doctor comes in and says, you don't got nothing. Because every time you went, you had something. Now you have 
Nothing. So, so God is great. We believe in an awesome God today. So we thank you so much. We give glory for that. You know, we believe God is still doing things. We believe in our three C's. We celebrate. The third one is C. We celebrate all miracles. There's not just big miracles. There's not little miracles. There's just what? Miracles. Stuff. Miracles that God does. You know, sometimes we take for granted that, you know, that life is a miracle. And, you know, just simple things like, oh, it's, it, I don't have a big miracle in my life. Well, trust me, if God's done something for you and you're not sure how it got done, that probably was a miracle. You just don't, you just don't, we, we, we have a tendency in our Christianese society just to take everything is, if it's not something big, it's not something from God. You know, what's little to you might be gigantic to someone else, or even what's little to you might actually be really big in your life that kept something else from happening. So God is good today. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony. If you're here today, we testify every week. Because you know what? You go, go through the world, there's all these bad news, right? You, know, you watch the news nowadays, you ever see anything really good? You know what? So we need to what? Let's hear the good things that are going on, because people need what? Hope. Because no matter what happens in this lifetime, no matter what, we are all going to die sometime or something. It's the next life that's important. Whether Maggie got healed or not, she was a testimony to her doctor, those that she's staying on. You know, it's great that God actually, God did, hey, that's great. It doesn't always happen that way, but it's awesome to see it happen because her doctor who didn't believe in God now has, a, has to think about that, doesn't he? <laughs> awesome. Hi, Dean. You come to do something to me? Uh. Last week, uh, I see someone walking slowly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week, I was leaving Rita's house in the morning, and it was hot. It was just like today. And I walked between my pickup truck, and there was another pickup truck sitting right behind me. And there was a guy laying across the seat of the truck. And I thought, oh, my God, what's going on here, you know? So I pounded on his windows, pounded on his windows, pounded on his windows. He would not move one bit, you know. So I opened up his door, and I shook him, and I shook him like that. He would not move at all. So I rolled down his windows, and it was hot. And he was just covered with mud. I mean, from head to toe, he was covered with mud. So I went down to the police station, and I called on the radio down there, because the doors were all locked. It was on a weekend. And uh, I talked to the operator, and I told her the story and everything. It says, we'll send an officer down there. So I just no sooner hung the phone up, I seen the police car going and I, out the parking lot, and I followed him down there, and I told him what was going on. And we went over to the pickup truck, and I told him, you know, that... So we opened those doors up, and he was hollering at this young man, you know, and I was hollering at him too, and finally he woke up and he got out of the seat. And I think, oh, thank God, he's alive. And I shook his hand, and I said, well, just right later, two ambulances come up the road, and they were checking him out and stuff like that. And he says, well, he's going to be all right, you know, and everything. But I just had to tell this story because God makes me feel good at doing something like that to somebody else, you know, saving his life. Amen. Dean's being too modest. Uh, <clears throat> he was in the right place at the right time. The ambulance, is, Dean, when you told me the story, right, they, they said if he would have been there a little longer, he would have been dead. So you know what? God does some amazing things. You know, we just need to be, what is it all the time? God, not what I want to do, what you want me to do. Dean didn't really want to take the time to go do that, but what he did, what, he just felt led by the Holy Spirit to do that. So God is good. Amen. All right, now we're going to go ahead and give our offering to the Lord today. Uh, we have our offering boxes here and here, and then in the back behind Pastor Greg, he's hiding it, and then over by the missions board, behind the VBS board. And we, uh, we just give to show the Lord how much we love him, because we want to use that money to what? Not to make ourselves better, but to do as much as we can to share hope with our town. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for today. I ask you to bless our offering and bless us as we fellowship right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here today, we give our offering and then we, uh, well, we greet. And uh, you can either bump or shake hands or whatever you want to do. But uh, we, uh, we, we're all what? One big what? Family, and that's key. Family is key. We're not a church. We are a family. Church is just the operative word about it. We are a family of God. So let's go around and visit one another today. All right. 
Oh, but that bit. All right, we're going to go on with the service today with our announcements for the week. We got a lot of things. Well, not a whole lot of things. We, we're busy. All right, but uh, here we go. So if you get to have a seat, we're going to go on with our announcements for today with Pastor Kyle. And I think this week you did the announcements at the festival in the park. So let's see how that went. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a spectacular day so far. But now, before we continue, here are a few things that we've got going on. Our family game night is on July 25th, starting at 6 p.m. right here at the church, and it's going to be so much fun. So mark that down in your calendars, July 25th at 6 p.m., family game night. Our men's ministry is getting together on July 26th, and we are going to have a dinner right here at the church, over in the gym, starting at 5 p.m. So mark that down in your calendars for the men's ministry, 5 p.m., over in the church gym, dinner. I'll see you there. On Monday at 6.30 p.m., Kyle Beatty is giving his class on the Book of Acts. So tune in, Facebook Live, 6.30 p.m. I'll see you there. All right, remember the four things that God asked us to do this year, which are, we're going to be reading through the Book of Acts together, and we're also going to be spending quality time together as a church family. We're also going to be giving to the Water Project, which is building new wells and planting new churches in Africa. And we're also going to be asking ourselves in each situation and circumstance, what would Jesus do right now? And those are the four things that God asked us to do this year. Stick to them. God bless. Happy Sunday. I hope you're having a spectacular day so far. But now, before we continue, here are a few things that we've got going on. 
Our family game night is on July. I-25th. Happy Sunday. All right, BBS is tomorrow, and it is going to be so spectacular. Pastor Devin has generously donated another $60 to the BBS fund. And what we're going to do, we're going to get some lemonade. 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 And of course, Rice Krispie Treats and miscellaneous expenses. Ho, ho, ho. Pastor Devin is so generous, let me tell you what. So what you gotta do, take the things off the board, put the money inside the envelopes. Lift it, throw it in, shut it, and you're good to go. And VBS is starting tomorrow. It's gonna be so much fun. I will see you guys there. Donate today. And now that you know absolutely everything that's going on, let's get back to the service. Now as we go back to the lyrics. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Something's going on, and we're going to give God glory. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, no matter what uh, battles we're going through, the, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. And we're going to see a victory through that. So.
sing today is called Do It Again. I believe God can do things over and over and over again. You know, really think about what's going on in our country. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. These things have happened over and over and over again in previous countries and all that. We pray for our country earlier. Now today, if you have a need, whether you're sick or have a financial concern or a personal issue or whatever the issue is today, Brother Lord, would you, do you mind praying with people? I had a chance to ask before church. Come on down. Brother Lloyd, if you don't know Brother Lloyd, he was a pastor for 362 years until he retired. He's also known as Methuselah. No, I'm kidding. He's a wonderful man of God. If uh, you have prayer today, come up. You can pray with us. We'll have our masks on. And we just want to believe that God can do amazing things. It says in the Bible, anoint the sick with oil. The prayer of faith will heal the sick. So if you have a need today, the sickness isn't always a physical sickness. It could be emotional. It could be uh, financial. It could be personal. Whatever it is, we'd love to pray for you today because God can do it again.
Amen? Can I give God a praise offering? That's great. You know, God, He'll do it again. God, you've never failed me. This morning I threw a twist on the worship team. Yeah, they're looking at me. As this song actually says, you've never failed me yet. I didn't like the yet word anymore. And so I asked them this morning, can we just take that out? They all looked at me kind of like, well, because um, you know what? God, it, it yet infers it might. You can sit down. Yet infers you, you might fail me, but God will never fail you. So right now we're going to, uh, for our last time here with the adults, we want to bring Pastor Greg forward. And I also want to thank you all for giving last week at the Revival. We had the largest offering at a revival ever. And uh, Pastor Greg, as you know, hasn't had a gig since March 16th because of COVID. Evangelists, they can't go to churches and things like that. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much for blessing him. At the end of the day, if you want to give an offering, you can... The, actually, right now, I need the board to do me a favor. Uh, two board members, can you go get the keys and take the offering out now? So if after church someone's give to Greg, we won't have it mixed up so we know that Greg gets what... Greg gets, I guess. Ooh. I guess no other way to really say that, right? You can take it off your own stage now. All right, so uh, so without any further ado, let's give a nice warm welcome to Pastor Greg Phillips. Ooh. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Did you see who made the front page of the uh, the great punchy paper? Pastor Devin, front page. Yeah. That's a lot of real estate in the newspaper business. The next day, guess who made it? The middle of the page, right at the fold. Yeah, me. Below the fold. I come in from far away, and I'm the one that uh, comes in below the fold. But you know, you can't buy this kind of publicity. When it comes to promoting the church and its activities, you can't purchase this kind of good news. And all it took was a pastor who is willing to do something different. All it took was a pastor who was willing to be different and to step out. As a matter of fact, all it took was somebody with a little bit of vision, somebody with a chutzpah, I guess you could say, to take what the world says is bad, turn it around to something good, and then use it to where we could share the gospel with it. As a matter of fact, I think... Puxatani paper. Pastor Devin, one strange cat. <laughs> and you may not in just a minute. Because for those that know me, know that I stand in the back for a reason. Because God usually shows me things, drops things into my spirit as I stand it back and, and look towards the nation. Um, today, I was, was going through this whole mask thing and asking the Lord about it. Oh, there I am. And I said, Lord, help me through this. And he shared three things with me. Do you remember my story on Obed-Edom? What brings revival? And Obed-Edom offered to clean the johns, to iron the underwear, to stand at the door, to wear a mask, as long as he... I added one thing in there, didn't I? But 
isn't it the same thing? Oh, but if I could just stand in your presence, God, I'll do whatever it takes. The second thing the Lord showed me was from our Naaman. Do you remember when the servant of Naaman came to Naaman and said, Oh, but Father, if the prophet would have asked you something big to do, wouldn't you have done something big? But all the prophet asked you to do was something simple, like dip into the river seven times and wear a mask. Third thing the Lord me was from the book of Exodus. Do you remember the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God's name in vain. And we talked about what that meant. Will you carry the name of the Lord well? In my state, in North Carolina, we've had to wear these right along this whole time. And where I live in Asheville, living in Asheville is like living in a bowl of granola, fruits and nuts is flakes. They have the mask police that run around yelling at you if you don't have your mask on. Really. And so this whole thing has become so political. This, this whole thing has become so, well, it's a hoax. Well, it's not a hoax. In fact, it's not scientific. Uh, why are you there? Don't be there yet. Is this? I'm not working here. I'm going to start in, in, a, in a minute. Get my cute looking face back up there so I know I'm... See, it's become so politicized that we don't... I thought it was interesting that as I was preparing to come to be here, I was going through some of my messages. And the Lord said, I want you to take this one with you. I said, but Lord, this isn't fresh. This is 20 years old. I know. I tried to fit it in during revival last week. Fit. And God kept saying, it's okay, it's okay. Pastor Devin said, Sunday morning, don't forget. I went, okay, Lord, what am I going to... Oh, really? This one? You sure? Because, Lord, this is not a great word. Lord, this is exactly the word for such a time as this. And as I stood in the back and I listened and explained about what we heard from the governor, and as I heard about things that were going on, I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, what is your heart right now in all of this? And as I began to feel the anointing, I started to cry. I started to, to tear up in the back because the Lord's heart right now is from Exodus 32. I went, God, no, not Exodus 32. The Lord said, okay, Acts 7.51. God, this is how you feel about your right now? Anybody know Acts 32 or... I mean, X uh, 751 or Exodus 32. Are you ready? Oh, ye stiff-necked people. Oh, ye uncircumcised hearts with deaf ears. Oh, ye people who are not lit to the Holy Spirit. And at that moment, I knew why God wanted this message. See, this message came from 20 years ago. And I'll have to see where it came from. Does anybody remember Randall Terry? Randall Terry was the leader of the abortion, anti-abortion movement among Christians in the 90s. And he set up camp in a town called Melbourne, Florida. It happened to be my hometown. And our church became involved in protesting 
the Aware Women Clinic, which was the biggest abortion clinic around. For two years, we made national news because protesters were getting arrested, pastors were going to jail, all because we're standing out there picketing the Aware Woman Clinic, the abortion clinic drive up and, and the people from the abortion clinic would put blankets up to their cars and, and walk them into the clinic so that the people across the street protesting wouldn't harass them. One day, there was a young lady that we had seen before who had pulled in and, and we're standing across the street and, and there's bunches of Christians calling out, kill her, kill her, murder. And this little girl gets out of the car and they, and they take her into the clinic with, with the blankets so nobody can see what's going on. We had the opportunity to speak with her. And they said, did, did you go through with it? And she said, I didn't feel like I had any other choice. And they said, well, we were here for you. We were here for you. She said, you were here for me. You were calling me a murderer. The people in the clinic were telling me that they loved me and they, they could help me with my problem. You people scared me. And at that moment, God dropped this sermon into my heart. So from 20 years ago to today, I call it, whose side are you on? I can't remember a time in my life when society was more polarized. If it's not Republicans against Democrats, it's blacks against the whites, men against women, gays against straights, the have-nots against the haves, citizens against immigrants, abortionists against pro-lifers, ball players against owners, liberals, against conservatives, reporters against politicians, attorneys against anybody, and talk show hosts against everybody. That's uh, me and Jerry Springer. <laughs> Combine that with a tendency to take sides, we believe that our side is right and the other side is definitely wrong. There is no middle ground. There's no room for compromise. There's no room for just talking. Gone is the well-behaved debate. Now there's only shouting matches. Angry, bipartisan wars are being fought on every level, and a fiery and cruel hatred just seems all too common today. Our American society today resembles one continuous Jerry Springer show and the one who shouts the loudest wins. I had to change the reference from the Geraldo show just to show you how long ago this was. But winning isn't enough these days because the ferociousness on both sides means the goal is to destroy the other side. You gotta ruthlessly crush your enemies. It's no longer about living together despite our differences. It's about obliterating the opposition, eliminating the evil ones. And into this angry arena, Christians are now identified and operating as a group. We, we have no business bringing causes or taking sides, but business we have and sides we've taken. Now it's already too late. It's like it or not, Christians have gone to war and we have earned a militant reputation. See, there was this swing in society to the right and Christian leaders felt time had come to seize the day and become this political kind of thing, this political partisan Sometimes I'd like to use the word fanatic. 
But doesn't that reduce the Christian voice to just one more noise? In the fray of all the noises, just one more polarity in the war of issues, in the cry of who's right. As a result, the world thinks that we Christians are after them, ready to force our agenda on society, that we are no different than the others. And just what is being accomplished for the kingdom of God by this new aggressiveness. Are we continuing to look for that middle ground? Or are we so worried about the who-sidedness part of it? The gospel should rise above this war. The gospel should, pe should speak peace and forgiveness and reconciliation to the wounded everywhere. It should cut a path through all of this ideological battlefield. The gospel would make friends and enemies on both sides of an argument. But unfortunately, the gospel can hardly be heard today. There's too much shouting by us so-called followers, believers who've tried to attach God to one side. Pastor Devin asked, because we were talking about it, ever Jesus would do if he showed up today? Who's Jesus beyond? Like Pastor Devin said, I believe he'd be wearing a mask for the sake of the gospel. But, feed the poor, welcome the stranger, love thy neighbor. Snowflake, libtard, liberal loser. We're missing the point. We're missing what the gospel is all about. I think that we can get a clue about what we're to do from the appearance of a pre-incarnate Jesus in the Old Testament. In the book of Joshua, chapter 5, Joshua is ready to go into battle to fight for Jericho. He meets up with his mysterious warrior as he's off praying. The warrior has this drawn sword. Now, getting ready to go into battle, Joshua says, Hey! Whose side are you on? Joshua says to this, this pre-incarnate Jesus figure, Whose side are you on? Joshua's getting ready to go into the battle of his life. He wants to know this mighty warrior who's very, very special. Whose side are you on? Are you for us? Or are you for our enemies? To which the man, emblazoned in fire, holding that sword, says this. Neither. Neither. But wait a second. How can that be? We're ready to go into battle against Jericho, the bad guys. We're the good guys. We're God's team. Whose side are you on? Neither. The King James, the new King James, has it a little bit differently. Joshua says, are you for us? Or are you for our adversaries? And the man emblazoned in fire with a sword says, no. Are you starting to get the picture? Joshua is about to lead the people into battle over Jericho. The first major battle of the promised land. He's off by himself at this point. He lifts up his eyes. He looks and here's this guy with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua asks, obvious question, are you for us? Or are you for our enemies? And 
I love the response. I'm for the Lord. It's not, I'm for you, or I'm for your adversaries. The answer simply is, I'm for the Lord. You see, Josh, I'm the commander of the army of the Lord. And Joshua falls on his face and he says, Okay, what message do you have for me? See, in other words, the guy's saying, I'm not for either of you. I'm not taking sides. I'm on my own side, which has little things the way that you see them. Uh, I know I can see it in your eyes right now. I can see the, the knives coming this way. Are you pro-choice or are you pro-life, Pastor Greg? Are you for prayer in school or are you against it, Pastor Greg? Are you against gay rights? Are you a Republican or a Democrat? Do you like Rush or not, Pastor Greg? Come on. Are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither. But as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell to the ground on his face and asked, What message does my Lord have for his servant? Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did. In the book of Revelation, it describes a man who judges and makes war. He's called the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he is undoubtedly God's five-star general. In other words, the guy who probably identified himself to Joshua, I think we know his name. Yeshua. Jesus. So once again, shows up in a human form at an important moment in time to teach an important message to travel through the ages to this time. Do you remember when God showed up in front of Abraham on the plains of Mamre? Do you remember when the angel of the Lord wrestled with Jacob? And Jacob and, and the Lord are... What's the matter? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's my buddy, Tully Blanchard. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Tully Blanchard, he was original four horsemen from the WWE. He's an evangelist now. We go into prisons together. He went from a drug-addicted wrestler to a man of the gospel because he decided that it was better to do things God's way Though with his own agenda. Good guy, Tully. Hey, Landon. It's Tully Blanchard, buddy. <laughs> Here's Jacob wrestling with the angel near the Jordan. So then we've got Joshua right before the Battle of Jericho. And this is so key. I just love this part. The most important question is not... Whose side is someone on? The most important question is, are you, Joshua, on God's side? That's the most important question, not just for Joshua in Joshua chapter 5. That's the most important question in my life and in your life. Like, we often pray, and we ask God to be with us. And, and not that that's not a good thing to pray. That's a good thing to pray. But God's word said, he's omnipresent. He's always with us. He's promised to be with us. But we want to pray for the power of his presence to be with us. And we want his guidance to be with us. And we want his grace to be with us in all ways. And, and our natural tendency is to ask Whose side is the Lord on? How many battles have been fought with people who said, God is on our side. But the correct question is who's fighting on the Lord's side? Who's truly standing?
standing for God. Who is representing Him well in battle? Who is carrying God's name well? Like the commandment number three asks us to do. Don't take the Lord's God, God's name in vain. I was at the fair and I stopped by one of the booths to get a drink and I had my mask on and the guy that was running the stands, he was effing this and effing that about the effing governor and the effing mandate and they were going to take the effing money and he was going to not wear the effing... And I'm thinking, wow, I wonder if he's a Christian. Because I hear that from Christians as well. The governor gave us you guys a break before. He didn't mandate masks. Ours said everybody. We were doing church in the parking lot. Had to stay in our cars. But we did it. Because if we can get under the presence of God, then things change. But we did it the right way because we had to be a good witness. It was interesting to hear some of the comments the last day and a half over this little piece of cloth from Christians. I understand from the world. Whose side are you fighting on? Who's truly standing for God's interests and representing Him? See, our flesh always wants to invoke the name of God to justify our desires, justify our political or, or military or, or whatever our desires might be. But the Lord will only show up for His loved ones that are truly fighting with Him. So we have to ask ourselves, if we're with Him, when we're sure that, that we're on His side, we can then rest assured that the follows. I think there was better ways that we could have handled our abortion protests as believers. We need to believe message. God's message to us is and we need to understand Joshua's response needs to be our response as well. Because he is not, nor will he ever be, on any side in battle. God doesn't come to the aid of our causes. And if we take any side to win a favored agenda through any means other than the Holy Spirit and God's work, then we're probably not going the right way. We need to take God's side with the power of the Holy Spirit. And the only way that we can take that stand with Him is to first fall on our faces and take off our shoes. And before we stand up again, remember that the place that we're at is holy ground. And, and we have to keep thinking that this life is primarily about us. We can't keep thinking that way. It's not about us. I have a friend who's a doctor. He yelled at me this past week because I wasn't, wasn't keeping my hands and, and all that stuff. And he, was, he watched me on the feed. Asked him about masks. Now I have to tell you, I've known this guy for 30 years, probably longer. And he's a doctor. And every time I go into his office at lunchtime, his mask goes from here up to the top of his head. So th this is how I know him. But it reminds me that he's different than me. He's Jewish. I didn't mean to make a joke about that, but I guess you can see there's one there. But I, I asked him about masks. He said, well, he said, you know I've worn a mask in my practice every day. He says, and a mask doesn't necessarily protect me from the things around me. Because if the virus... Oh, I set my alarm, Pastor Devin, so I would be done on time here. The mask doesn't necessarily protect me from stuff coming this way, but it 
keeps anything that I've got from going out to others. And this is what my Jewish friend said. I've heard you talk about being a Christian your whole life, and Christians are about loving one another. Wouldn't it make sense that if you loved one another, you'd want to protect one another? I went, oh, leave it to a heathen to know the Word of God better than I was practicing it. So you see, it's not about an agenda or a political way of things or whether it's a hoax or not. It really comes down to, oh, ye stiff-necked people with the uncircumcised heart and the stopped-up ears. Why? Are you not listening to the Holy Spirit? Are we on His side? Because if we're not, if we're not careful, we're going to come up with all kinds of plans for our lives, and we're going to ask God to bless these plans. Come on over, God. Get behind what I'm doing. Instead of saying, wait a minute. What are God's plans? What are God's plans in the world that I live in? And how can I align my life with them? See, that's a different way to think. Do you know what came out of that abortion clinic debacle all those years ago? Right now, there's a thing called pregnancy resources that Christians have set up in that town. The abortion clinic is long out of business. Because this group of women who had a heart for girls in trouble started a thing where they tried to put themselves in places where they would see and meet these girls. And they gave them a real option without signs with love. With love. See, the most common question we ask, what is God's will for my life? And I think the better question would be, what's God's will for the world? And how can I line up with it? Might sound like you're saying something different, but I think it's fundamentally different. Because when we're going at it from the perspective of what's God's will for the world, And how do I align with it? It's so much easier to fall in place. So prayer. Prayer. We ask God to teach us to pray. And maybe that's what we need to do now. Let's just bow our heads. So God, teach us to pray like this. Teach us, Lord, to pray according to your will, to just seek your will above everything else. We want to be with you, God, yes. We want you to be with us, yes. Leading us, guiding us. We need you with us. We can't do anything without you, Lord. But God, we need to start by seeking you, by coming to you, by yielding to you, in a Joshua kind of way. God, we're here. What message do you have for us? Lord, what is your will in this world? How can we align ourselves with that? We trust in you, Lord. We don't trust in ourselves. And God, we praise you. We praise you that your will, that that, that, that you that you put your spirit in us for that purpose, that your very Holy Spirit that dwells in us for that reason will help us to know what is your will. So we pray, O Lord, help us to walk in that. Help us to walk in your will in this world. Help us to align everything that we do with your will. Help us to abide in you to make disciples of all the nations, 
to live for your glory in all that we do, to proclaim your gospel. We know that this is your will in the world. Help us to align our lives with it, we pray. Help us to make these disciples, help us to walk in purity, to walk in humility, to seek your love, to love others selflessly, to give sacrificially, generously. God, we know that all these things are your will for our lives. All these things will help to build up the church, to care for the body, to reach those who are without Christ. God, please help us to align our lives with your will today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, when I first heard about the changes in VBS, I started to get a little nervous. And we were sitting at the dinner table. Thank you for providing for my meals and stuff. I said to Pastor Devin, oh, oh, don't worry about me. God will take care of me. And inside I'm thinking, oh, great. Here we go. Another week. Gone. Canceled. Because of whatever this is. And then Pastor Devin mentioned what the rules and regulations were and the, the struggles that leadership had. And I was praying for leadership, believe me. But it all came down to this, really. I told you the other day that I would stand on my head and juggle upside down while I gargled peanut butter if I could just share the gospel with one person. Reach one person. Oh, by the way, juggle upside down, standing on my head, gargling peanut butter, wearing my mask. Because the government asked us to do it. It's not ethically or morally wrong. I got a health condition, but God's going to take care of that. Because He wants me to go and win one. How about you? Peace. So, TV, come back up on stage. We're going to finish with one last song. But you know what? Uh, before we do so, you know, we had a, after, and after we're done singing, uh, if you're on the VBS team, uh, Susie's going to have a meeting in the gym about 10 minutes after service is over. You need to go get your kids first so she can go to the meeting. She's down there. Uh, but, uh, you know, we live in strange times. But you know what, what the thing is, though, no matter how, what anybody thinks, no matter what they do, no matter what they think about anything, at some point, all life will end at some point. The question is, where will you be at the end? And I want to be on God's side in heaven. And uh, I have my political thoughts and all that, and I can have that. You know, the bottom line is, I, I, just like Greg, I, I can't stand on my head. I can gargle the peanut butter. I can juggle one ball at a time. Someone got that, okay. But I, 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 I won't do anything. Every day I pray, Lord, I think we're closer to the end than ever. But I do pray to God. I say, God, I, I'm looking forward to your return. But you know what? Give me one more day to tell someone about Jesus. One thing you got to take while watching all this, say, you know, it doesn't mean time is short. You don't know what someone will have or what will happen. If you have someone you love that doesn't know Jesus, make sure they know Jesus. And don't just accept the fact, oh, yeah, I know who Jesus is. Make sure they have a what? Relationship with Jesus. Saying they know Jesus means absolutely nothing. Relationship means you talk, you walk with Him, and you actually do what He asks you to do. You don't go, well, I don't like that. I'm going to not ignore that. That's not have, that doesn't work well in human relationships. Why do you think that works well with godly relationships? We need to do what is right. And unfortunately right now, hey, uh, Romans 13 says, obey those over, over you as long as they don't violate God's law. Because one thing this has taught me, there's a whole lot more people than we ever imagined are going to hell and don't know it. And we need to have a heart for them. Where Greg doesn't know, and now I'm with this, uh, maybe he doesn't, I've never told him, but 
back in the height of the abortion movement, I was, I was part of Operation Rescue in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. They did the same thing. 8,000 Christians barricaded an abortion clinic, made the national news. My dad, who was an executive of a Fortune 500 company, vice president, went down one day and he got arrested. He was afraid the boss would fire him. He had to wear a monitor, and the judge said, well, what's, what's your hours work? He says, well, I'm, I'm vice president. I work all the time. He's like, that doesn't work. How many, it, it was, it was, he was worried what would happen. And he walked into the office, and the boss understood what he did and said, it's okay. He had to do, I don't forget how many months he had to wear it or weeks. I, I don't remember the story. But then through the whole thing, I looked at it, and I said, you know what? Yeah, he did that. But you know what? We, we, were, we were forcing people not to go in rather than what? Loving on them. I got to see up close. And, and I had to wrestle with that. I was in my young 20s. I was a junior in college doing my internship during all this. And I was on the raw, raw side. And, and then one day I, just, I was sitting back. I was at the meeting. And I was with my girlfriend at the time. Not Joanne. Sorry. I didn't know her yet. Obviously, I didn't marry her, right? You, you got that, right? Okay. I was sitting back, and she was going nuts, and I just saw everybody in the room going nuts, and I sat back and said, you know what? Christians are their own worst enemies. I've said that many times in the pulpit. That's where I first realized it, that we were doing more harm to the gospel than good. And I want to, bring, I, I want to win the whole town. I, I, there's so many prophecies, so many things are happening. I believe the town is ripe for revival. We saw so many people at the park that came by. We got to talk about God. You know what? That's, we just need the opportunity. And we need to take it. Can't take it for granted. This last song, what's a, can you go down? I, I always forget the words. Keep going down one more. I will sing of the what? How many of you believe God is good? If you don't believe God is good, you need to come see me. And that, while we're singing this, uh, at the end, while we leave, the, when we leave, if Greg is going to come back up later. We're dismissed. And if, you, if he has a word for somebody, you'll have it. You're welcome to stay, but you'll also be dismissed. I don't want to... I mean, it could, he could be here for five hours. I don't know. That's up to him. Uh, if you want prayer, you can come forward for that. But here's the deal. Uh, you can go to VBSB and then come back in if you want. But we believe in the goodness of God. You know why the world is afraid? You know why the world is going crazy? You know why there's so many he- this side and that side? Because they don't know what the goodness of God is. I know I'm not going to get sick because of Psalm 91. I know what God has said. We're going to do a series of this all. I'm I'm researching every single God said. We're going to go through them all. It might take us a couple years. I don't know. I just know that's what God wants to do. Because we got to, time is short. We need to know what God said and then live on what God said and see our lives change. I know I don't have to worry about bills. God takes care of me. I know my health is fine. And I stand on them because I wasn't always like that. Because I now know when I, and I do what God says. Do I make mistakes? Yeah. I, when I do wrong, I tell you I do wrong. And I apologize. And we have to, we get forgiveness. Just because you made a mistake doesn't mean you're not a, a, a Christian or a good Christian in any way, shape, or form. Okay? Here's, but here's what makes you a bad Christian. Ignoring the word of God completely doing your own thing and not asking for forgiveness. Actually, it doesn't make you a bad Christian. It makes you no Christian at all. But we need to show people about the goodness of God. And for me this week, it means being really uncomfortable. Because I I have one of those medical conditions. Greg has a heart condition. I have a diabetic condition where I can't breathe stuff in. But you know what? I'm going to trust God. You know why? Because a lot of those kids are going to come. They they live in homes that don't talk about Jesus. It's hard to get the parents to come and know Jesus. But what if we got one child saved, the child grows up, and goes to the ministry? Wow. That's what happened to Billy Graham, right? He didn't grow up in a Christian home. Someone reached him. If I remember correctly, your Randy, Randy got saved at a VBS driving, right? And now he's one of the top children's pastors in the country. You never know what will change somebody. So today we're going to sing that song. If you want prayer, Greg, if you want to come forward, if you want prayer, you can come get prayer with Greg. And then after we're done singing the song, I'll officially dismiss the service. BBS meeting will be in the gym in like 10 minutes after the service. And then, uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll go on.
uh, from there today. And then once they're done singing it, Greg, you want to, God gives you something to prophesy, you can, huh? Oh, he'll do another trick and then he'll prophesy. Okay, all right, sounds good. All right, so let's just sing this song today because our town, our world, but you know what? We need to affect our town first when we go out to the world. Let's pray this song for us and for our town today.
Dear Lord, we just thank you for today. And we ask you, we thank you that you're so good to us. And Lord, I ask you to bless all that are here today. Lord, help us, Lord, to say that above all else, we're on your side. Continue to do great things for us and let people around us see the goodness of God. Let us show people who are looking for hope. They're looking for goodness. They're seeing so much evil. Find the goodness of God. Let us introduce them to Jesus. So give them all the goodness they could ever imagine. We thank you for today. We thank you for all you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. And you're what? Awesome. And if you, uh, BBS meeting next door, if you want, Greg says to do one more trick. And then if you, he might have a word or whatever, he, God speaks with him.